go to the blowhole now and those beautiful pictures that you have captured. When the swell's running, as we yeah. said, a picture, especially from the southeast, it can really blow. It's powerful, it's, it's forceful, it's spectacular on top. What's it like below the chamber when the swell is on? So, you know, the, the first thing you to talk about is the swell. So, you know, if it's blowing 30 metres up the top, you wouldn't expect to see anyone in there, let alone myself. So yeah, sure. I will only go into that blowhole when the conditions are suitable. But, yeah, that, that blowhole from the top when it's like that is amazing. It's amazing. Um, but from below, when the conditions are when the conditions are right, I jump in there and it is like literally a 10 metre sort of vertical chamber that goes vertically down and it looks absolutely amazing. You saw the photos that I took of my wife Kelly in there and, and the chamber is just absolutely beautiful in there. Yeah, it's really stunning. We're looking at it now and the light is quite special as well, isn't it? Yeah, the light, obviously throughout the throughout the seasons, over the summer, that light uh, with the sun orientation comes beautifully into the into the blowhole there. And when that blowhole goes, you don't need much of a, a blow on the blowhole. We've been in there with swimmers and get this beautiful, absolutely gorgeous rainbow go in there. So the summer months are spectacular, mm. but then the winter months are amazing because generally the water is so much clearer in there. Yeah, right. You, you say, Scott, it's 10 metres deep there and there's a, we've seen the, some pictures of a couple of mantas down there. What else have you found with respect to marine life and, and anything else? Oh, look, honestly, they're, they're generally what I'll normally see in there is stingrays. There's, there's generally an occasional school of fish, but because it's such a confined little space, I guess it's not a welcome home for many sea creatures. So I think the stingrays go in there just to explore for food. Mm. Um, I've found a, a lot of man-made objects in there, but, yeah, generally it's just the stingrays that I see in there. What sort of man-made objects? Is it just rubbish? Yeah, I've found an umbrella from Italy. I've found a push bike in there, you know, a couple of statues. Yeah, $5 note. It's, it's amazing what you find in there. A couple of hats. It's a tre treasure trove. Um, I'd love to know, even though... Yeah, like, and I, I will generally... Sorry, go on. Sorry, you're right. Oh, so... I was just going to say, yeah, like, it's obviously all that man-made stuff. You can just try and get it out and um, and uh, put, it, put it out and it up for next time. Yeah, for sure. What about the sound down there? For those who visited it, um, we know it's, 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 it's fear fearsome when it's blowing the sound, but you go down there on really um, still conditions. Is, it, is there a certain sense of silence down there or what is the sound like? Yeah, like when the blowhole is, is like a lake down there, it's, it's extremely peaceful. Um, and then when I've been in there where there's been a little bit of swell, I'm an ex-Navy pilot and we used to hunt submarines and it's literally like a depth charger going off in there. So you'll, you'll go down and, and just sit at the bottom and wait for a wave to come in and it's this real deep, low frequency rumble in there and it's absolutely spectacular to listen mm. to. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool, a pretty cool oh, experience in there. You mentioned your history at, at, at there as a, a Navy diver. I mean, what draws you to the ocean, this type of, of free diving and why is the blowhole one of your favourites? I think just, you know, it all started while well, I'm sitting right here now at the Worry Point Swimmers in Jerringong and we all started with just basically, I've only been swimming for about the last six years, um, confidently in the ocean and it just started, we're part of the surf club and we wanted to do the Captain Christie here which is a local sort of ocean swim and we'd, we'd swim off the rocks and go to shore and we're having a barbecue one day around Simon's house and I just said, look, um, you know, that Captain Christie would be amazing to do. So we just started training off Jerringong here and this uh, Captain Christie ocean swim is about 1.8 kilometres and, and, and it trained us up confidently to be able to do that swim. Yeah. So since then, we've just stretched the boundaries and continue to explore the coastline and, and Climber Blowhole was one of those places to explore. Yeah, I bet. And just before we go on a safety note, I mean, it's not for everyone. You're skilled in this area. You know when the conditions are right to go in, but yeah. generally speaking, it's pretty much well yeah. off limits for most people. I, I would definitely say it's off limits for most people. It, you know, ocean swimming as a whole is always about assessing the risks, knowing your own limitations. And if you're comfortable with doing that, then by all means enjoy it. It's just another recreational activity like push biking or mountaineering. Um, but you've always got to be assessing the risks. And that's the blowhole is, you know, I've unfortunately pulled a, a person out of there that didn't survive with my job now. So, yeah, yeah it's a risky, it's a risky place. But, yeah, swim within your own limitations is the message.